Maybe a pond would be better right there. Who needs a driveway? I wouldn't have to leave the shop. I could open the garage door and just catch fish. This is inspiring. Oh my goodness. You guys aren't supposed to see that. Maynard did a great job on this picture. I really like this picture. Should I go one size up? What a fantastic weight transfer jerk bait shape. Right there, ready to go. It can be weighed with quarter inch bearings too. Sorry, they're pouring cement. I'm just working in here, I don't care. They're working out there, I'm working in here, okay? I'll show you their progress tonight though. I might be able to fit five. I was thinking about doing the green screen thing, making myself a area. Fathead minnows. I'm hoping for some juicy facts on the fathead minnow. It produces a distress signal. I think a lot of people are familiar with this. They kind of croak. What's it called? Scratched off. They scratched off. An alarm signal produced by an individual. The sender reacting to a hazard that warns other animals. They warn each other. They let each other know that harm's on the way. Watch out guys, the big hand's in the bucket again. And they all start going brrrr. Dull, olive gray in appearance, with a dusky stripe, D-U-S-K-Y, with a dusky stripe, extending along the back and side. What is dusky? Somebody must understand what they meant by using that word. I'm offended that they used that word. There's a dusky blotch midway on the, to on the dorsal fin. There's another dusky thing on this fish. Breeding males acquire a large gray fleshy growth on the nape. Fish have a nape. Do they? A? I didn't know that. I, there's the nape of the neck. What's the nape of the fish again? Oh, is that, that's probably just above the gills. I forgot the 16th. This is after I just finished the lure. It's got its clear, it's got its last clear coat on and it's done. And I forgot the 16 white breeding. Why can't you highlight, right click on a word? And then, then in the box, there's like a pronunciation, click it and it says what, why haven't we got there yet? Tubercle. Never mind, I got it. Tubercle. 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 Okay. I forgot those. I feel like I just went on a long rant there, but I don't think I did. We're not too off base with what we're talking about. I'm just confused. So these minnows are quite tolerant of low oxygen situations. They're in small lakes and ponds and wetlands and, and larger lakes and streams and everywhere. They're everywhere. Once in a while Wikipedia just goes on a little rant, listing off everything related to one word when they could have just said that word. They're everywhere, man. Check under your pillow at night. There might be a fathead minnow. They're filter feeders. Look at that animation. You're supposed to understand what filter feeder means from that animation. They strain suspended manner matter and particles from the water like how there's dust in the air it's if we had strainers on our face that ate the dust in the air but maybe the dust particles are a bit bigger that's still gross oh they sift through the dirt and the silt and they rub their face in it and kick stuff up and eat it with their filter face the carnivorous portion of their diets so their diets are portioned okay they eat insects and crustaceans zooplankton you know the chunkier meteor particles floating around in the water the zooplankton and there's pretty much nothing that doesn't like to eat them you can always buy a bucket of them around here at least that's what i'm used to i don't leave my house much so i don't know if that's common everywhere but so the male defends the nest as females pass by and spawn eggs to be cared for by the male so these stupid fish will kick each other off of each other's nests and defend their eggs. So they say the new male comes along and evicts its resident. So what? Does that mean it kills it or it just shoes it off? Was there a fight? I don't know. It just it, it, it served it some papers and evicted its resident from the nest rather than occupying an empty one. When given the choice between an unguarded nest or an empty one, they say it will go to the one that already contains eggs. The new male will, will care for the old male's eggs. I mean, let's be real, it's the female's eggs. Also referred to as a word I'm never gonna say on this channel. <laughs> Probably the most baffling fun fact to ever grace the Marlin Bates channel. I'd had minnows or... I think what the whole nest thing is trying to describe is that... Th that was the chair, I didn't fart. Is that their eggs will get more localized because they fight for nests that look bigger and better. And they're probably bigger and better because they're in a good spot and they survived for longer. So that they'll dump their eggs in good spots more. And there's always a fight for the fittest male to protect the nest because it evicts. So even though they are a bunch of word that rhymes with chucks, it's for a good cause. 
So, they are so tolerant to bad conditions that they are commonly found in bodies of water that are completely uninhabitable to other fish, such as waste drainage sites. They love that. Probably because they filter de poo poo, and that's what they eat with their face. Yucky. I bet they get real big around those waste drainage sites. Okay, they start talking about sewage now. Hazard in sewage treatment works affluent male flat and blah blah blah. There's steroidal compounds, plasma and collagen. Level 16, that is a mature female flathead minnows. Blood plasma levels by inhibition of testicular growth. Wikipedia, why can't you just speak correctly? I think the wastewater is doing something to these fish's testicles. I think that's what that paragraph is communicating. These poor fish love sewage treatment wastewater so much that it's affecting the growth of a vital component of their reproduction systems. I don't know why I just avoided saying testicle after saying it two times. Sorry. So they also studied these fish in low pH exposure, and they behaved abnormally compared to other fish. Stress behaviors, such as surface swimming and hyperactivity. They must not have liked it. They wanted out of the water. Some disformities were also brought about by long exposure to low pH. The males lost some of the brightness in their color. The females become heavy with eggs, but may not spawn. And the eggs come out abnormal. Oh, the lower the pH, the less likely the eggs eventually hatch. So they kept lowering the pH on these fish, these poor fish that are trying to escape the water and having their future generations deformed. They went a little further with it to see what else would happen to these poor fish. Wow, wonder how many they did this to. So fathead minnows exposed to cattle feedlot affluent. And I think that's the liquid that comes from a cattle feedlot. The males are feminized and the females are defeminized. It's not just the frogs. They're turning the fathead minnows gay. Yes, the, the, the male fathead minnows have reduced testicular testosterone synthesis after exposed to cattle feedlot affluent. And then the females have decreased estrogen, androgen ratio. Anyway, importance to humans. Next article. In a biological model, their hardiness and ability to live in specific scenarios can really tell you, or more importantly in their case, not live in certain scenarios, tells you that your water is garbage. Very bad if these fish can't live in it. And we've reached the references for all of that beautiful information. All of those wonderful facts we just went over. They're referenced, I guess. Chip was making weird noises right next to the camera, that entire fun facts, weren't you? Good boy. Fun facts are over. We got three giant footings. Ready to accept a deck. We're gonna get a covered deck on the front. They're pouring cement tomorrow. That's a sidewalk. And a larger, flatter, nicer pad. I think I've been trying to change up my style a little bit. I'm kind of regretting how big I made that. Maybe slim things down. I'm definitely slowing down and carving more, taking more time to carve. Trying new stuff, this lip and the angle, and it's tiny. The reason that it's that way is because I don't really know what that's gonna do, but I think it's gonna be cool. Starting with white. That, blah, blah. <coughs> excuse me. That was detail sapia, kind of brown. It's got a lot of variation in that color. The next color will be a lovely layer of gold. Chelsea was killing wasps on the deck with soapy water. It's how we pass the time around here. Okay, I didn't skimp on that. I'm thinking since it's gonna be under all the scales and I want the belly to have white scales, gold behind the white. Scales is gonna be good. Now I need that dark line down the middle. Don't ask me why my bottle of Detail Smoke Black is so big. I use this color a lot. Time to be careful. What am I doing? Swooping up once it gets to the gills. It's a little choppy. Smoothing out, that's looking just fine. Gotta be a little bit more bulbous towards the back.
Bit of a bump right there, but there's a line. It's gonna be under scales. Right now it looks like a snook. Not what I'm going for. I'm going for a fathead minnow. Some platinum-y, pearly whites, some purples. There's gonna be violet. I'm staring real hard at that picture. I'm not seeing many more colors necessary for the base coat. I want some silver on the top. I just sprayed that silver and it took away a lot of that sapia that I want. So don't be afraid to come back in with the color that you miss. Brown, brown, light brown, silver, line gold. When you do that, there's stuff going on. Okay, clear coat. As you can see, I added a lot of stuff. Let's just leave it at that. I think I'm focused on taming that black line down. I think that's why I added so much. It's gonna help. I have a good feeling about this lure, dude. Occasionally, especially if you put too much glitter in it, that first clear coat can have some bumpy poos. The light being reflected is all broke up. Those are bumps. Very glittery. You'll be able to see those bumps in the scales a little bit, but they can end up looking not bad. Put on the masking fluid and now I'm putting the scales back on. Starting with pearl white, but staying kind of low. I just want overspray up here. Next color. What's that gonna be? This is gonna be pearl platinum from the other direction. Gold. Oops. Dropping crusties in the paint. Pearl wine. Neon orange. Like right there. A little one up here, a longer one back here. A little faded. I think I'm gonna do purples down below in that same style, kind of random. I'm gonna stay away from anything neon with the purple too and use lavender, kind of like a pastel. Now I'm gonna get it a little bit darker, very top, angle the brush. I need it the other way. Make the front of the scales darker. We're getting this thing out again. I find these big containers more applicable to what I do because it forces me to shake my paint constantly. All of my paint, which is healthy for your paint over the years to keep it shook. But you know, if all you got is one of these, still keep it shook over the years, like once a week at least, who knows? Not me, that was not a professional's suggestion. That was just a thought. Very angled. That looks pretty good. You can still see a lot of pearl on the scales that black sprayed on. This should be a pretty good scale reveal.
The black was just still a smidge wet, but those are some pretty spiffy scales. If a fish happens to get that close to this lure, and it takes a look at those scales, I don't think it's gonna know they're fake. I don't think so. That looks pretty good. Pictures got it, so I put that little orange spot behind the eye. Medium smoke black, and I put it on a cup like this. Medium smoke black. Whoa. Talk about no effort in the brain. I just said stuff right there. Like medium thick black super glue plus detail smoke black. Anyway, I make it so it's like the full spectrum from there to there. Like I mixed it that way. It's really thin over here, thick over here. And you can grab what you need while you're painting. Yeah, I have messed plenty of them up. You want to make it look like there's still spines in it, but the, with the brush strokes, it never looks perfect. And at some point, you just have to stop because you're going to make it look worse. But in the end, it's a nice artistic touch, you know? It needs a little bit of yellow, something yellow. Maybe a little bit of this stuff. Yeah. This needs eight millimeter eyes, but yeah. These are off Amazon. These are the only eight millimeter eyes I have. We've matched the reference pretty good, but that eyeball, it is like brown and yellow. I don't like it. I want a red eye. There's green in this one. There's no green on the bait. I don't want to put green in the eye. There's red flash in the bait that shows up a lot better in person than on camera and it's gonna match these eyes really good. It's still dark, just like the picture, but a lot more interesting than brown and a little bit of yellow. Fathead minnow with a red eye. Clear coat. It's nice and early. The bait's tied on. Let's see how bad the fish want it this morning. And only this morning. I only have six hours to fish with this. I need to be done by noon so I can edit. I didn't just randomly pick that up off the bottom of my truck. I brought that and it fell on the floor. What a disgusting thought. Oh, does that have nuts in it? Okay. Here comes the sun. I'm so excited I did not even check the action from the bank. I just got straight in the water. Time to fish. It's a floater. I feel thumps. It could be from spinning, mind you. It's wobbling. Oh, it wobbles good. That feels good. I wish I could show you the action right now. Let's just fish with it for a while. I'll get, you, I'll get action video at the end of the video. I posted a picture of this lure's face on Instagram and peop, some people were suggesting it might be super spin because of the angle of the lip. But I think because the lip is so small, it's as though it has that tendency but does not complete it and it wobbles. Got 
got one. That was top water. What is it? It's a bass. It's official. So hooked. Oh, I'm not joining the party. No, no, no. <laughs> he almost tried to hook me, fellas. Large mouth, like fat head minnows and weight transfer jerk baits. He'll be just fine. He just did a little bit of break dancing in the kayak. I wrestled in high school, it's way worse than that. It's official. What else? Another! This doesn't feel like a small mouth, or sorry, large mouth. What is this? It's a pike. It's a pike. Let's not lose the pike. Thrashing its face around. They are so fast. I didn't get hooked. I probably should have gotten hooked right there. A little pike. It's official. They like weight transfer fat head jerk baits as well. Fat head minnow jerk bait. So snotty. Be free, get out of here. I'm disgusting now. I'd take a bigger one though. I'm really glad I did not get hooked right there. I felt that fish starting to bend and I knew he was contracting to go the other way and I just kind of froze. I was like, oh no. We got a large mouth and a pike already. I don't think it's even six o'clock. I need to remember that this size bait, the five bearings weight transfer thing works incredible. And it's almost a parallel lip to the body. And the weight transfer casting is impeccable. I was able to get that weight to go really far back. There we go, fish on. They are wanting top water this morning. That is a good largemouth. That dude got hooked good. He's just like a little, I guess he's not big, he's just a football. Chunky. It's official again, be free. <laughs> it's official, be free. Largemouth like fat head minnow weight transfer jerk baits. This bait's working good. Gotcha! It's that top water, dude. That's what they want this morning. Woo! Another bass. Bass love this fathead Benno weight transfer jerk bait. Especially on the top. I got bass schmoo in my mouth. Gotcha! This is fighting like a pike. But it's a bass. Because I hooked it in the side of the face. Four bass, it's official. The fat head weight transfer minnow is seriously proving itself to be a good bait. That was on the way back. Just casually casting on the way back, man. Okay, let's see if we can see the action of this bait in this water. It's so good. It is such a good action. I hope you guys could see it. There we go. We had to get one here, you know? Oh, 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 it, it's a fish. Oh. Pond bass like weight transfer jerk baits that look like fat head minnows. I was cruising along really steady. I did this weird, like I, I did this with my rod. There we go. That shot it up and then the bass hit.
I was walking on it last night and it's so weird. I knew every single bump and big crack and where it wasn't level. And I still had the tendency to step that way, but it's, it's just flat. I don't need to do that. Yeah. It's really strange just walking on a flat surface right here. Would probably still prefer a pond instead of the driveway, but it's fine. This is pretty good too. Not only was I able to pull fish out of not a private pond, we got like five of them out of there, the bait worked exactly how I needed it too. That was the intended action. That all just worked out so well. And I still have this amazing bait, even though it dives. It's really simple, but that's one of my favorite builds so far. I like the gnarly gill and the sockeye salmon. This is in top five. Every cast was tail first because the weight was back there. You could cast it so accurately. And when it landed in the water, it was just which helps not scare fish. It's not just Yes. More like this. We can expand upon this. The lip angle can change the weight. I can add fixed weight to this and get it to just suspend and not dive so hard. This is good stuff. All right, I don't have much time left. I need to edit this and upload it. So there's no bonus anything, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. They're turning the fat head minnows game. Oh, does that have nuts in it? That, blah, blah. <coughs> excuse me. Oh no. The big hand's in the bucket again. What is this? A bunch of word that rhymes with Chuck. Oh, I'm not joining the party. Typical. Typical.